All right, well, thanks everybody for uh, coming. It's great to see a good turnout. And uh, I'm Vince Miller with the EdTech Center, and I'm here with Marzia Karsh, and she's also with the EdTech Center. And we'll both be talking today about Google Apps. I'm going to actually do kind of a quick intro overview and then hand it over to Marzia to talk about some of the different tools. One question real quick, how many of you have a Google account? Okay. So you've all used Google Apps in some form or another, um, whether it's just Gmail or a calendar or Docs, and we'll cover several of those different things. And if you don't have a Google account, uh, it may be that somebody at one point or another has sent you a link to something, maybe a Google Doc that they've shared, and so we'll show you kind of how that interaction works as well. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the fact that we actually do have here at the college um, for our StuMail accounts. We actually do use Gmail as the back end service for our StuMail accounts. If you remember, a few years ago we used to have our StuMail out in the MyJCCC environment and you still can go through there to get to the Google StuMail, but it's actually hosted out with Google in the cloud now. And so just as kind of a point of clarification, I wanted to talk about that real briefly because the thing that we're going to spend the rest of the hour talking about that Marzia will chat about will be the Google Apps that you'll actually be able to go out and have, if you have your own account, you'll be able to go out and access those tools. But because we have Google for mail internally, I wanted to just make sure real quick and touch on that, so keep that, that point clear. Um, if you were going to log in to your StuMail, and even as employees, we all have a StuMail account, the way that, that students can get to that is to go to our web page and go to the library and technology page from the home site, from the home page. And then there's a link out there to student email, which gives a little bit of an instruction about using Gmail. And you, it talks about the fact that you can go in through MyJCCC and click the mail icon, just like you always did and that will take you out to a Gmail login page. Um, the other way you can do it is click this other link that's given there, which will take you directly out to a Google login page. And so if I go out there and use my, my JCCC credentials, and you see here it has the at stumail.jccc.edu suffix that it's already pre-populated. So if I go out there and sign in, and we'll see if I got my password right, uh, you see that I get into a Google Apps environment, and there's an email icon there. And when I get out to the email, I can see my JCCC StuMail email out in the Google environment. So, so that, that's where students would go if they use this, this interface to get to their email. Now what I've done, and what a lot of people do, is actually set this through the mail settings with a forwarding out to another email account that you already have. So a lot of people never even go in and look at that because they set it up one time to forward and then they've never gone back out. But there may be others that actually do go in and use that. So any questions about what, what StuMail is and how that works in the Google environment? Just want to make sure and kind of point that out, but that's there. And it's been there for a few years, and we've been using that. And that's a, a free service that, that we have with Google. So I'm going to go ahead and log out of that. And then Marzia is going to go out to Google.com and sign in and then show you the different tools that are out there. So I'm actually using right now, I'm using the Chrome browser, which is another Google product. You don't have to use it to use Google, but I think it's fun that, that uh, they offer so many different things. You can sign in from there, or anytime you try to use a service that requires a sign in, it'll, it'll ask you for your sign in credentials. Um, I've actually got a couple points of trivia on your, on your Gmail address. I don't know if you guys knew that. If you've got a personal Gmail address, um, the, if you put dots in it, it uh, is a, still the same address. So I just put in my name, but if I put it in this way, it's still going to the same address. It, it ignores those dots completely. 
Um, that's that's handy if you need to, to, to register for something that, that, that tells you you've already got an account and you can't remember the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know. um, or, or if you want to, if I remember my password, it helps. Okay, we're going to be here while I remember my password and, <laughs> and forget to put the CAPTCHA on. There we go. Okay. I just changed it recently, so it <laughs> wasn't automatic. Um, we've already talked about Google Plus uh, a couple weeks ago, so I'm not going to go over that more. Um, you know, that's a new social networking service. Um, but anytime you, you log in with the Chrome browser, you're going to notice this little bar up across the top um, that gives you a quick access to services. And anytime you go to, to, to uh, Google search, you'll, you'll uh, find the handy link there. Um, so the first thing I thought I'd talk about was the calendar. Um, which uh, you may notice that I've got more than one calendar um, because I'm actually sharing these calendars uh, uh, with my husband so that he can put down, you know, for instance, that my son has a gymnastics class. He can put that down. I can see it. He can see it. We can both edit it. We're sharing that calendar. Um, but at the same time, I can put events on my calendar uh, that don't show up on his. Um, I've also got tasks here that, that uh, show up and then I can there we go. Tasks that show up and that I can check off as they go. Um, and I can put dates on them. Um, the tasks also show up in Gmail. I can have multiple lists, like this is, this is uh, my, my A press task list, and I think I've got a couple of other ones. Um, but that's, that's an easy way for me to keep on track from any, any computer, any device I'm using. They don't sync with Microsoft, though, unfortunately. Uh, my my mail does, but uh, the calendar entries. Do. Uh, the calendar entries, yeah, the calendar entries I receive on you know if if I'm using an Android device, the calendar entries I receive from Exchange show up on my my Google Calendar with an Android, but they don't show up on the main calendar there. Yes. Uh, let me go back to calendar and I'll show you. Okay, so let me add a calendar. Um, here's my calendar. And so the little arrow right next to here, if you can see that, it's a little box arrow square. I can, I can uh, um, share this calendar. So, and actually I'm sharing it with my husband right now. Um, so I can change that so you can see all event details are just that it's a busy available time. So that's handy if you're scheduling with somebody and you don't necessarily want them to know all of your details about your events, but you want them to know that you're not available for a meeting. Um, I have it set that he can make changes and manage sharing, meaning that he could share it with somebody else. Um, that's, that's in case he's got a different email account that he wants to use. And because, you know, I trust him. I've been married to him for a while, so, you know. <laughs> you know I can't trust him to manage my calendar. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see the options there. So you could have it so that they can just see the events but not make any changes to it or make changes to events but they can't manage sharing, they can't add anybody else. So that's handy if you've got a group of people that you need to manage and you need to, to, to let them know that there are events happening, but you don't want them to change anything happening with those events or add new people to the group. So how many of you guys used Google Docs? <laughs> Two people. <laughs> Google Docs is actually pretty awesome. Um, what it is, is it's an online word processing and spreadsheet and slideshow program um, that's free. So I can create a document right there. And it looks pretty much just like a word processor. Let's me edit it just fine. 
Um, and what's even cool is, is, is when I share this item, um, I can, I can uh, share it with any of my contacts. So I can share it with Vince right there. He's not on his laptop, but I don't think. But if he were, he could be editing this document right now, and the changes would show up live while I was working. There, I think he's. <laughs> OK. Um, and then also, when somebody's, somebody's uh, sharing an item with you, you can see a notice that they're sharing it. And there's a little chat window there that you can open up so that you can talk with them about whatever changes you're making. My sister and her daughter, who's at college, use this all the time. Her daughter's dyslexic, and so she needs a lot of help editing her essays and stuff for her, her, her classes. And she'll put her papers up on Google Docs and they can chat and, you know, they can see corrections being made at the same time. Oh, you know, save. You might want to change the sentence or you have this misspelled or something. So it's, it's a really nice, free, collaborative tool uh, that allows them to be able to work on a paper together. It's just one possible use. Uh, it, it auto-saves. No, it auto-saves, so. OK. There we go. Okay. Now there we go. Because I hadn't made any changes to it. He's, he he couldn't see it because <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't actually done anything with it beyond. So if you make changes, you can see those right up in the Yeah, I can see the changes live on the document as he does it. He's he's trying to trying to log in now since I've shared it with him. Is it not? It's not showing up yet. Okay, that's okay. We 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 can do that later. Um, actually, we've already got a document that we both have access to. There you go. So there you go. See up there it says two other viewers. So I can see that he's he's uh, there right there. He's editing right now. Then we can have conversation over here. Now I saw a, a video a couple years back where they where they uh, had a they pulled up a Google Doc and had 200 people editing it at the same time. Oh. Not recommended. Yeah, well, you know that might get a little confusing. You know, in addition to that, there's also uh, spreadsheets, um, which they're they're separate documents. Um, we we use this for for internal testing for for uh, uh, Angel. Uh, and we can all edit at the same time while we're testing something, uh, and write down, you know, what all what all we found. I don't know if I've actually made any sort of presentation on this. Yeah, um, you can make uh, uh, PowerPoint-esque presentations. I say esque. <laughs> it's not really PowerPoint, but it's handy in that it's that it's on the web. You don't have to carry it with you. Um, and uh, it's got the same um, ability to, to have commenters at the same time. That you can you can actually start uh, a presentation. I don't think this will work, but so you could actually uh, start a presentation with. Uh, speakers' notes and uh, have people sharing it at the same time, so that you could you could have a live you know in the chat window, um, doing a distance presentation using something sort of PowerPoint-ish. It's out there. Now he's editing. And that, if you save it up there, when you create it in a Mac or PC, you can access it from either one. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, or you could get to a conference and realize that your PowerPoint has not run because it's the wrong yes. computer or you created it somewhere. Or yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can access it from, from your, your Mac or your PC or any, any web connected device pretty much. Um, you know, your iPad. And one of the things that we've used it for a lot is when we have external people that we're collaborating with. We have some consortia that we work with and those people wouldn't be able to access something like InfoShare. So we put a Google Doc out there and that makes it easy for anybody to collaborate around that. 
and then not not only not only do you, can you uh, um, share it with with other people to internally edit it. Um, if you see up there where it says private to me, that's because uh, I you know I'm plus one other. Uh, that's because I'm just sharing it internally. But after I'm done with the presentation, um, I could just share that by publishing it. Wait. See if I can. Oh, there we go. I edit it there. Change that. So. I could publish that straight out to the web um, if I want everybody to see my slideshow. Um, or I could make it sort of an unlisted item where, where you can get there if you have the link, um, but it's not search engine crawled. Um, or just keep it private. So there's a lot of options. I like being able to, to give a presentation and then say, you know, here's my slideshow. Another thing you can create is a custom form. Is there a charge if you, leave, if you reach a certain level of content? Uh, there is a charge if you reach a certain uh, capacity of storage, but that's difficult to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot, but it, it it pulls with all of your files, so it's 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 uh, counting, you know, any images you have in, in Picasa uh, uh, web albums or or in Blogger or you know all the documents you have here, etc. It's all it's all pulled for all of your Google storage, uh, and you can rent more storage. It will alert you if you get close to that, but it's it's a lot of files. So I can have a. See, I'm so I I can quickly make a pretty pretty nice survey. Um, there's, there's actually a lot of options here. You can change the theme on it, which I think is kind of silly. Um, you, can, you can add, so, so then you've got uh, uh, your forms there. Um, you can email the form so that you don't actually have to, to publish it, or you can publish it on the web with the same public or, or unlisted settings. You can embed it, um, which works in some forms better than others if they allow the iframe. So that works, I believe, in Angel. You could actually embed, but not in WordPress at this point. Let me see. If I'm going to email it, yeah. Oh, there's the published one. It's right over here. So that's what it looks like when it's published. And it's basically what it looks like when it's emailed or embedded anywhere else, too. So I can check my answer. So where's my form? Oh, I lost my form. There we go. And the answers are actually feeding right into a spreadsheet, <laughs> which makes it very useful data. If you want to ask a survey or whatever, then you can, you can get a, a, a nice little spreadsheet. Or, or I have one where, where I just sent it out to, to my friends and said, you know, tell me your address, and, and had the forms there. So I've got a spreadsheet of their, their names and addresses. Wouldn't they all send you it back in a different format? Uh, they can't. They're filling it out. Oh, 
and it's feeding into that spreadsheet. So you don't have to take separate spreadsheets. You don't have to email them a spreadsheet and say, here, fill this out and send it back to me. It's all fed right in from the form. And this is the same with, with the spreadsheet. If they're editing it all at the same time, you're not collaborating with a bunch of, of, of different spreadsheets to try and get the versions to change. You don't have to worry about check in, check out, like you do with, with InfoShare. It's all happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. And whoever you send it to does not have to be logged into Google, right? No, no, they don't. Yeah, they just have to have a, 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 a modern web browser to be when able to do that. It, it's going to come from your Google account, right? Uh, no, it's it, what, when they when they s fill out the form, it's filling out the form on that spreadsheet, and then you log into your Google account and look at the spreadsheet on the back end to see what their answers were. No, but I mean when you send it, when you share it with. Email. Oh, that is that is a good point. Yes, yes. If you send it by email, it comes from your Google account. Which is not necessarily the same thing as your Gmail account. Because my Google account, I use my JCCC address as my email address. And so when I invite people, it comes from my JCCC email, right? Is that, that's how it works right now. Sure. I mean, you could use any email address to sign yeah, up for yeah. account if you want to. Yeah, although they, they heavily encourage you to get a Gmail account when you do that. Um, and it's, it's a good idea anyway, because it's free and it's cool. And <laughs> big fan. Um, let me see if I can get. <coughs> some of these numbers here. Um, there's a lot of options in here uh, for the spreadsheets. Um, one of them is that there are gadgets that you can use to display the data visually. And I'm hoping I'm not messing up your spreadsheet here. Uh, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel before I actually display it so that I'm not <laughs> ruining the data gathering. Um, but so, so uh, you know, you can make like bars and, and, and charts using, using uh, um, selections from, from your spreadsheet here. Um, there are actually third parties that write them. Oh, you can make a Gantt chart. That's kind of nice. Um, a store locator gadget. A word search gadget? I don't know. That that seems silly. Flashcards. So you know, if you browse through the gadgets, you can find a lot of those. And if you add it to the spreadsheet, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to mess up a, a a spreadsheet here accidentally. Um, but it'll it'll float in your spreadsheet, and you can actually publish the gadget separately. So you can have. Uh, data that's being used to visualize something like, say, the flashcards uh, or word cloud or, or uh, uh, some sort of chart that's then published separately outside of that. So you're just embedding the chart and you've still got the, the uh, data in the background that's feeding that. Um, attach that to a form database and you've got something really powerful that you can see live results as people fill it out. So for the flashcards, for example, I have to put the words there, yes? Um, let's see. So I think, yeah, I think what it's doing is that you have a database of words, and then you select the columns that have those words. Go add a gadget. You select that one, and it's making it's making flashcards. I haven't played with this, so I'll have to see. So it's making flashcards. Right. So it's. Right, you would have the spreadsheet that you're powering that from, but then you could change the words in your spreadsheet and it would change what it's showing. So, any more questions on that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. I, you know, definitely, there's, there's an entire presentation in that, I think, but uh, uh, it's definitely something to, to check out. Let me close my 50 bazillion windows I've now opened. Um, you know, you may notice that any time you're in Google, you can click one of the, the uh, things up there, but you can also click more and see even more options. Um, or if, you're, if you know that, that uh, Google offers a service and you can't remember where it is, just Google it. <laughs> you know, it it's the easiest find a way to find something. Uh, you know, is to search itself for it. Um, you 
You know, how, how many of you guys have used Google Earth? It's pretty awesome, huh? I don't know if you guys knew that a, a trivia fact, the, one of the uh, uh, co-founders of the product that became Google Earth, which was called Keyhole at the time, uh, is actually a KU grad. Um, so if you're using Google Earth on Windows, and you zoom in as much as you can without touching anything, without moving it any direction. You open it up fresh, and, and you just hit the, the the zoom in button. You actually zoom in to uh, Lawrence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the uh, Mac version actually goes to uh, oh shoot, it, it goes out to 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 someplace. Uh, also in Kansas, but it was because the, the uh, developer of the Mac version was, was uh, from that area. It's a little small town in Kansas, um, but was also a KU grad. So yay for KU. Um, you can get a lot of the same power from Google Maps. So there we go. Um, you can get a lot of the, the uh, layers and whatnot. You can find third-party apps that have added that to there. Uh, and I didn't know if you knew this, but if you get directions, let's not start out with my house. We'll have the brown bag next week at Marzia's house. Yeah, well, you know. The, the, the fun part about having a unique name is that you can find my house. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go to the airport. So, and that I think is the wrong airport. Yeah. There we go. See, much better. So, so, you know, you can get directions, driving directions, but did you know you can also get bus directions? Are there any buses here? Yeah, well, yeah, actually, apparently you can take a bus and get there. Um, and it's going to, by default, say that you want to leave right now. But you can actually change that to say, you know, I'm going to be traveling tomorrow at 8 a.m., um, so tell me. So those numbers down there are the bus numbers, where it says 875? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, see, no, you know, it can't. It can't get me there at 8 a.m. I can you do it at 9. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, data it gets from uh, um, various cities. It gets from their, their transport. Um, and uh, you can get, you know, whenever, whenever I, I'm traveling somewhere, like, that has good public transport, you know, like New York or Chicago or wherever, I can, I can get transit directions. Then it tells me which bus I'm supposed to catch and which train I'm supposed to get. Uh, very, very handy. And I can use it on my phone, too. So <laughs> I can just double check that. Yeah, it looks like you kind of loop around backwards to get there. But you can get there. So if you've got students that need to get someplace and don't have a car, they can, they can Google it and find out. Um, you can also, I'm not sure I'd advise doing this, but you can get walking directions. <laughs> you know, that's a heck of a track. Yeah, 12 hours, 35 minutes, Ian, just a little short. Little. But uh, yeah, but I notice it's suggesting, oh, or take public transport. Yeah. You can also get biking directions. Yeah, four hours of biking. That's, that's a little better than 12 hours of walking, but you know, I think I'd still take the bus. And like I said, the, there are all sorts of third party um, tools that are called mashups that, that take advantage of the map information in here and do something new with it. Uh, you graph it in a different way. I've seen things like uh, uh, projections of floodplains or, or uh, um, you know, finding, finding locations for, you know, a, a given restaurant or something like that. You, you can get all sorts of different combinations. Do they, do they, some, some of them you can actually type in and they'll show you the actual picture of the address you're going to? Mm -hmm. And you can, you can do that here. Um, if you see this little, this little uh, guy right there, you can take him and put him down here, drag him onto the map. It might take a bit to load. Oh, that's 
So there we are. Um, and what they do is every once in a while, they, they drive around on every single road with this specially equipped car that has a camera, you know, that, that's taking constant pictures uh, and recording data. Um, and uh, they stitch that together afterwards. That's actually like full motion video that they stitch the still frames from. Um, and, you know, due to many lawsuits, they, they have technology that blurs out license plate numbers and uh, faces. Yeah, that, that it was kind of hilarious for a while that, that people people were caught, you know, not showing up to work in the middle of the day or <laughs> appearing to be leaving from from a, a perhaps a disreputable business or yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they <laughs> did some blurring of the faces, yeah. But it is really handy if you're trying to f go someplace you've never been to be able to to turn this around and see what it looks like at the end of where you're going there. Because sometimes, you know, the directions seem like they're clear, but then it's confusing at the end. And am I in the right place? Well, there you go. Yes, you are. Um, and uh, I don't have it on this machine, but have you guys heard of SketchUp? What SketchUp is, is it's a, uh, a free software download um, that it's a 3D program that makes, it's really easy at making buildings. That's what it's designed to do. Uh, and you can actually use it, they, they have extensions too that, that make it do other things that are, that are pretty cool. Like you can use it to, to make uh, uh, models, foldable paper models you can export it out as. Uh, but uh, uh, when you, when you build something in SketchUp, you can actually import it into Google Earth onto a location. So you can make a 3D map of you know, a building or, or your house or wherever and have it show up in Google Earth. And they've had contests for, for students to, to build their campus up and things like that. Another thing you can do is uh, Panoramio. Uh, and Panoramio, um, if you're taking pictures and you have some great pictures of a location but that, that don't have pictures of people in it, you can submit your pictures uh, and it will show up in Google Earth. So they're, they're basically using people power to, to uh, get a lot of these pictures of, of places and, and uh, whatnot in there. There we go. Now, since we were just on SketchUp, uh, I wanted to mention the, the uh, Google 3D Warehouse, uh, which is a warehouse of SketchUp models that you can download or upload to. Um, and they've got, uh, you know, cathedrals and churches of the world, so you can download models, you know, 3D models that are, that are already done, um, that people have submitted. And you can, you can uh, view them in Google Earth. And that's, that's how you view things in Google Earth if they're not officially part of the, the uh, program, because they have to be approved to be part of it, um, is by using the warehouse. But you can also take those models and just use them yourselves in uh, SketchUp. You know, that I think would be a great way to, to talk about uh, you know, cathedrals and historical buildings. So what do you get if you click on one of those? Uh, well, we don't have the software, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a detailed uh, uh, thing there. If I download the model, I'll get the model, but I don't have anything to view it with yet because this machine does not have uh, either SketchUp or Google Earth on it. Yes. Right, right. But, but I, I still get a pretty good... There we go. So I can view that. That's pretty pretty nice. So this is not a picture of the place. The model that someone built. Yes, it's a model that somebody built. Usually they'll use uh, uh, textures from the place itself, but it's a model of the place. Mm. 
And you guys are all familiar with YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's another another Google product. And uh, you know, I just thought I would uh, plug. Our official YouTube channel. Oh, it's me. Look, I'm plugging me. <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah. It's we're getting very meta. Maybe, maybe I'll 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 show this next week to a different group so that I can have a, yeah, uh, <laughs> a picture of myself showing a picture of myself. Um, <laughs> But we, we do have an official channel that has all sorts of educational videos on it, uh, including some complete classes, like uh, our Accounting One class, um, which has worked out pretty well. People, people have given it pretty positive feedback. And uh, the tech brown bags will show up there, as you can see, evidence of right there. <laughs> um, if you want to start your own Google uh, YouTube account, you can do that too. Um, the, only, the only caveat is that if it's your personal account, you are limited to 15 minutes of video per video. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're making your own video, it's harder than it sounds, and 15 minutes is quite a lot. So, <laughs> But they did that so that they didn't have people copying whole movies on there. Um, if, you, if you have a video, you can embed those videos in, uh, in Angel. Um, or if you have one of our WordPress accounts, you can you can link to it that way. Um, any any video that you see on there that allows it has a share link on the button or you know, on the the bottom there that says share right there. So then you can just copy that in there. Um, or if you're sharing it out to, to Facebook or Twitter or some other, you can just click the link and it does that. We're also embedding them on the college website as well. So. Yeah, yeah. In fact, ta -da. so then you can just use the share link and it shows up like that. Um, one, one tip I'll point out though when you're watching videos, I don't know how many of you knew that you could expand those out and you don't have to watch them tiny. Because I see so many people watching videos really tiny. If you click that, you can watch them full screen. So much easier. So that's just the little arrow buttons right out there. And how many of you guys have used Picasa? <laughs> yeah, just the people in the back. Uh, Picasa is Google's uh, photo sharing site. Um, they have both a downloaded app that you can use to catalog and upload your own photos. Uh, and, oh, my friend's going to love that she's on there. Um, <laughs> You know, that you can use to download your own your your uh, own albums, um, or you can upload them from within Picasa. And another site that Google owns for, for uh, editing is called Picnic, which is spelled horribly and I hate it, uh, but I love the service. So it's P-I-C-N-I-K. Dear startups, if somebody's taken your domain name, please don't spell it silly. <laughs> <laughs> um, they sell it both in a basic version and in a uh, I should start picketing. And in a uh, subscription model, it's like $36 a year, I think. I, I went ahead and, and splurged for that because, uh, let me sign in. Does the subscription version include players? <clears throat> um, it's, no, it's, it's just editing. So. I can edit by pulling things in from my pl Flickr or from my uh, Picasa. So now it's seeing photos from my Flickr that I haven't even uh, um, published out yet. There's one of my daughter. We'll edit that one. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, 
oh, it's taken a while. See, that's a quilt she made. She off my daughter, but um, so. You see, I've got a whole bunch of effects here that I can apply to photos. Um, I can touch up photos for, for, you know, if there were red eye or anything, I could remove that. Um, there we go. The teeth whiten. Shine be gone. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> yeah. So. The brush size. I've got to change the brush size. Whoop. There we go. So if I wanted to whiten her teeth a little bit, I can do that right there. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, uh, an Insta Thin filter. They've got they've got a bunch of filters. Um, <laughs> I could add highlights to people's hair. <laughs> you know, don't, yeah, reality should come with an Insta Thin button, I think. Uh, and you see that some of these say premium, and that's, that's what you're paying for. That's the difference. But you can still do quite a bit with the, the free version. You can add frames. You know, this is, this is uh, you know, this is not Photoshop. Uh, but it's good enough for, for, for quick edits for a lot of things that, that uh, you just want to you know, make something presentable. So let's see if I can find, let's add some rounded edges. There we go. So instantly got some rounded edges. I can adjust that if I want to. I'll apply that. Do that. So. Yeah, how about if I do that one? Um, you can do some, some advanced things like uh, levels and curves. Those are all advanced and premium. Silly stickers. But once, once you've done that, you notice it's telling me I can save that back out to Flickr as a separate photo. And I can change the privacy, so save it as a new file or replace the old ones. So the old one's still there? The old one's still there, and I've made a new version, and then I've, I've published that one publicly. The old one hasn't been published yet, so I can upload my, uh, what, what I do actually is my camera has a card on it that uploads everything to my Flickr account and hides it, the privacy settings. So, so then I can go into Picnic edit them so that they, they look okay, that are, they're cropped or, or whatever, and then publish them out and make them public, and nobody ever has to see the, the early version of it. You know, and you can do the same thing with Picasa. And they, they also sell prints and whatnot. I'm going to show you another tool. So we jump off of photos and onto something else. Uh, and that is Google Moderator. Um, Google Moderator is great if you've got a guest speaker and you want to figure out what questions the class should ask the guest speaker. And that's actually right within the spirit of where this, what this was invented for. Um, originally, this was an internal product that Google made for their, for their TGIF meetings, where they'd, they'd have these Friday meetings, and, and uh, all of the staff, you know, all dozens of them at the time, could ask uh, you know, the, the, the founders questions about the company and, and, and the direction it was going in. Uh, so they developed this, this uh, internal tool, um, which at the time they called Dory, but uh, uh, they decided they didn't want to get sued by Disney. Um, Yeah, this was uh, one we made a long time ago. Uh, and it's pretty basic. Uh, you can either submit a suggestion or rate the suggestions that somebody else has submitted, um, you know, or do a combination of the both. And, and what happens is, as you go through, uh, so you say, wow, that's a great idea. 
let's do that, or no, I don't like that idea. Um, so you know, just thumbs up, thumbs down, basically check or X. And you go through and you rate all of the suggestions, but if you say, wait a minute, my suggestion wasn't there, then submit your own suggestion. It goes in the pile and everybody else can, can look at that and rate it. And then as time goes on, you find out what the more popular suggestions are. Uh, so then if, you, if you're wanting to ask a, a guest speaker some questions, then, then have everybody submit their questions and everybody else in the class then rates them. And you end up with a, with a priority list of what questions you want to ask. Do I? Same question, but, but you word it differently. Then it's still then then it's still people can can uh, you know check mark or, oh, okay. or X that. So I mean it's it's still yeah. the ones that people find important still float to the top. There's so many Google things I could <laughs> go on all day. And I don't know if you knew that Google Books is both a book search engine to search through printed books and find a, a phrase. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of a. a it, So it can search through to find a phrase. I'm surprised I'm not finding a wrinkle in time in here. <laughs> um, you know, find a phrase or a title, and uh, uh, you know, once it finds that phrase, it can highlight it. Um, it's not finding it in here because it's finding just titles that way. Find ones that have. There we go. There. Okay. So you can find exactly where in the book the reference was made, uh, and then it's got uh, links to buy the book um, or find related books. So that's a really nice study tool to, to to find. You know, I I I know what has that phrase. Um, and uh, speaking of books, um, Google Books is also an ebook store uh, and a cloud library. So you can actually buy and read books that exist uh, uh, entirely within um, the internet uh, or on any device that can connect to the web to, to read them. It's, you know, like Amazon or, or, or Barnes and Noble, you know, but it's, it's Google's version of that. Yeah, those aren't those are trending topics. They're not my books. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> so yeah, my, my books are over here. Not that I don't have my own guilty reading pleasures there, but <laughs> which is a really funny book. It's all it's all messed up animal parables. It's And I thought I would show you a few search engine tricks. Um, you may know that uh, Google has a separate, under the more, search engine that just searches through scholarly journals. I don't know how many of you use that. What? Scholarly journals. So it just search through through uh, research journals. Um, so. All of the searches or results are in, in scholarly publications. And you know, since we're on campus, it's got listed resources at the JCCC library. So if you have students that are trying to find something, they're trying to, to, to make a, a, a good citation, they can use the, the Google Scholar to, to find that and then look further than that. Let me see. I can submit a loan request for that. Um, it depends on the permissions of the, uh, oh, there we go, full text. You 
you know, it depends on the permissions that were granted as to, to how much of that you can see. So there you go. I get a, 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 few, a, you know, a full journal publication because I'm on campus and they've, they've got the full text available. Um, you can do the same thing with patents. I think it's under even more. Come on. Patent search. There we go. So I can search through patents. I'll just click on one because it's already there. And, and view the whole patent. You can search by number or by, by uh, um, some of the text that's within the patent. Um, here's one that's fairly recent is you can also search for recipes. Although I find the easier way to, to search for recipes is I'm going to go to the web and I'll search Google. You know, and that one is kind of ambiguous because I could be talking about the cartoon figure or I could be talking about the, the dish. Um, but right here, because it, it, it's contextually detecting that I'm saying something that could be a recipe, it's giving me a link to say, I just want to find recipes. So now all of my results are recipes. And not only that, I can say, I want strawberry shortcake that does not require baking powder. And I want one that I can make in less than 30 minutes. I'm going to be even more ambitious and say I want less than 100 calories. Oh, well, there you go. Here, here are some, some recipes right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, they, I think they all use Splenda now. <laughs> oh, I could use yogurt. I want ones with yogurt. There you go. So now I've narrowed it down to like one recipe. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go for the pepper and onion one. That's why I'm like, no, 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 no pepper and onion. We're going to go with the easy and elegant strawberry shortcake that has yogurt in it. Yeah. Um, another thing that you may notice is uh, if you search for things that could be results, uh, for shopping results, there's also a separate shopping search engine to uh, find comparison prices. And you can also refine those. You can filter those. So, you know, I want to find something that's in stock nearby or that only has free shipping or I have a price range. Okay, how did you get to here? Uh, you're going to go from the main Google search engine, search for something that could be a product, and then over on the left, it's going to have context. So it's going to say, well, you know, what you could be searching here, you might be searching for shopping. You might be searching for news or videos or maps or images. And you can narrow it down to just search for those things. And if you look through even more, you can usually find some of those specialized search engines. So geo, social, specialized search. There we go. There's product search, scholar. Or here's a fun one. You can search through search trends. <laughs> so I want to look for app and program. And let's see what people are using more. Uh, it looks like. This app, yeah. So, so I can see that that over time, people did not refer to apps, but then somewhere around 2008 they started to, and now people might be using that term more than they're using program. And I can look by regions. It's a lot of really interesting data. So, did anyone have any questions? Um, on this, the red line. This is program. Because it's got here program and app. So this is program, this is app. So we can see a graph of the two terms, terms compared. And program is actually searching for a lot more things. 
So maybe I should change that to software. There we go. That's a more interesting chart. So we can see that everybody used software, and then that's kind of going down, and, and people are talking more about apps. Why doesn't have this um, regions on there? Part of the country it's using it? Yeah, it, or which country? So, so this is Singapore versus the United States. So I could click on that and see just the United States, and I could narrow it down even more and see just individual states within the U.S. What do you find the Google Doodles? Google Doodles. Uh, Google Doodles are, uh, you know, when when uh, uh, Google makes uh, every once in a while they change their logo around. If you'd asked me yesterday, um, it was their birthday, so we could have seen a, a Google Doodle, um, but not today. Uh, so if you just search for it, they've got a gallery. So you can see the, the old ones. So if, it is a, if they have it on that day, they will. It yeah, it's just be there. It's just going to be there for the day, and this gallery doesn't contain all of them. Because there's also regional doodles. I mean, they, they, the regional doodles that you may not ever see in the US. So if you want to see something from another country, how would you do that? Um, I don't think they have them. I think they just have selected ones here. So. But I can access to Google Mexico, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's this one is a contest. So they, they uh, uh, do this yearly contest with grade school kids to, to have them submit their own Google Doodle. And then give the school a, a so scholarship. What she said, yeah, I mean, if you're in Mexico, it would recognize that. Right, right, right. It to recognize that she wanted to see a Mexican version. Yeah, yeah. She could do by, by proxy or she could change her location. Ah. You change your default search location to gotcha. say it's Mexico. And flying spaghetti monster Google. That's great. So I know that was a whirlwind of things. But did I, did I miss anything? Any, any questions? You might show people the reader. The, the uh, Google Books reader? The Google reader where it tracks your uh, all your different the what? websites. That you're oh, Google to. Reader. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I just. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, if you read a lot of, of, of blogs, which I kind of do, um, I have a few added in here. Um, then uh, uh, you can track them all through Google Reader, and you can add them in, um, and you can actually star and share them with other people. So there's there's some recently shared from people that I follow, and um, the amount of uh, there we go. There's the Cheeseburger Network blog, because everybody needs that, right? That's the home of the, the uh, lol cats that let you make cat pictures and, and you can put captions on them. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. So yeah, there's the pictures of cats and, and you can add your own captions to them. <laughs> but the amount you see of each item depends on, on the settings of the blog itself. <laughs> 